Well, you know the, the statement, uh, picture is worth a thousand words? It's true. It's true. Uh, the other day I was putting on some windshield wipers. Now I've got a foreign car. I thought this was going to be pretty simple. I found otherwise. But within the windshield wipers, I was pleasantly surprised that they had directions. So I thought I was just going to clip them on. And they gave me directions that were folded like 75 times into this little tiny square that you unfold and unfold and unfold. And you finally look at it, and you can't read anything. And I'm looking at this going, I know I'm getting older, and maybe I need my readers, but... I put my glasses on, I still couldn't read it. You ever have to take a picture of something and enlarge it? <laughs> oh, that's how it works. I don't know who the genius was that printed it, but they did fulfill the obligation. <laughs> but inside that packet, it wasn't the words. I read the words and I was still completely miffed. It's like, what in the world? They don't go on. This won't work. And then I look, and I'm like, oh, there's this picture, and it shows you how to actually do this. And I was, so I followed the pictures, and guess what? We have wipers. <laughs> I'm not a danger in a rainstorm anymore. Uh, and it was beautiful, and I think sometimes within life, we can know a truth, we can hear about a truth, you can hear a truth preached on, and you go, that's really cool, I wonder what it looks like. I wonder what it looks like in the context of life. And so today, I want to give a picture of what it looks like to be led by the Holy Spirit. And some of you, rightfully so, might be like, I wonder where this is going to go. Because sometimes the whole thing can get somewhat mysterious. And some individuals, it's all about emotion. And other people, it's all about fact. And you're trying to figure out and negotiate the realities of what the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit looks like on an everyday basis. Acts chapter 13, we get a picture. I love it. I was reading down through here. I'm like... That's where we're going to spend our time, right here. And so I'm going to invite you to go with me on a journey, albeit it will be brief. We're going to see some incredible things. So, Acts chapter 13, and we're going to read, it's going to be in the first 12 verses, but I'm only going to start at the first three. And it says this, now... There were in the church at Antioch prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manian, a lifelong friend of Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. And while they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then after fasting and praying, they laid hands on them and they sent them off. Through the first 12 verses, I was just overwhelmed at some things that I saw concerning the work of the Holy Spirit within believers. Those who have confessed Jesus Christ as Savior, the Bible says, have the indwelling presence of the Spirit of God. And yet, what I find is so many people struggle with what that looks like. What, what does that mean within the context of my life? And the first thing that I want to point out in this passage is in verses 1 and 2, that we need to create space to discern the voice of the Spirit. We need to create space to discern the voice of the Holy Spirit. God often speaks when we create space. If there's one thing that I've learned in life is it's full. It's full of noise. We hear a lot of things coming at us. And so what we see in this picture, so we, we observe this picture, how did they create space? They created space by worshiping and fasting. Now fasting was this practice that you would set something aside, that you would hold yourself back in those days from eating so that you could give your attention to something else or someone else. 
And so this whole idea of fasting was creating space to hear the voice of God. To hear the spirit of God. I would use the word to develop an attunement to the spirit of God. To be in tune to when he's speaking. Because sometimes it's like those old, this won't work for half the people sitting in here. But the old radios where you would be in these older cars and you're trying to go to a station and it would go in and out. And it's like, you know, and if that makes no sense to you, you think I've lost it. It's really the way it used to happen. It would tune in and tune out, tune in, tune out. And I think oftentimes within our life, we have this sense of there's so much going on in life that it's hard to stay in tune with the voice of the Spirit of God and what he's saying. So we create space. And for us, fasting is a weird word. I mean, what we hear in our culture is intermittent fasting. How many have ever done that? I have, and it's probably why I'm in such good shape. But sometimes it doesn't work. (laughs) The, uh, the reality is that's almost like this health conscious thing that we do, this intermittent fasting. But in scripture, it was, it was to create space to be attuned to the spirit of God. With this in mind, sometimes I think in our generation, we must adapt and understand the purpose of fasting and not get lost in the weeds here, that it was a practice for a reason, to set aside some time to hear, to crowd out the noise, because we have a lot of noise. So how do we do it? I would dare say that in our lifetime, unlike that time, You cut out your phone and social media for a day. And you may go to the psych ward by the end of the day. Because it's such an alarming thing not to be in touch with the world. Right? We're all important people. And every time the phone buzzes, it's like, oh, you know, I'm important. I hear this. Sometimes we need to just stop. Stop that, and I think this younger generation especially, put the phone down and start tuning into the Spirit of God and ask yourself a really big life question. What is the God who created me, what is he speaking to me about? Mm. That was worth your whole trip right there. What is the Spirit of God speaking to me about today? It's important that we understand the purpose of fasting. It's to create that margin. I would even dare say this. I know people with margin. You know what we do with margin is we fill it. No, I've got margin. I had margin. And then I filled it. We tend to do that. You ever get in the car and you have some place to go? What do you do? Podcast, you know, music. We're filling every nook and cranny of our life with noise. And we wonder, we're shocked. It's like, what's the Spirit of God saying to you? I don't know, because I got so much noise. And we've got to create space, space where we can really, as these believers did, set aside time and intentionally focus on Spirit of God Speak to me, and what are you saying? You know what he does? He says they're worshiping and praying, and he speaks to them. He clarifies what he's trying to tell them. The second thing that we see is in verses 4 to 7 is not just creating space to discern the voice of God, but we need to be obedient to the leading of the Spirit of God when he speaks. Look at verses 4 to 7. Actually, I'll start in 3 because it's part of it. It says, Then after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them, and they sent them off. It says, So listen, this is good. You need to hear this. Verse 4. So being sent out by the apostles. No, it says being sent out by the Spirit, by the Holy Spirit. They went down to Seleucia. 
And from there they sailed to Cyprus, and they arrived at Salamis, and they proclaimed the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. And they had John to assist them. And when they had gone through the whole island as far as Paphos, they came upon a certain magician, a Jewish false prophet named Bar-Jesus. He was with the proconsul Sergius Paulus, a, a man of intelligence who summoned Barnabas and saw and sought to hear the word of God. Here's a non-believer seeking to hear. They want, he wants to know, what is this gospel thing you're preaching? I go back and say this. When we're talking about obedience to the Spirit of God, think about if Paul and Barnabas didn't obey. I heard God speak. I'm pretty sure it was him. But nobody really knows. I'm just going to continue doing what I've been doing. This Sergius Paulus would not have heard the gospel if Paul wasn't obedient to the voice of God. I'm always hesitant when we talk about obedience to the promptings of the Spirit of God and the voice of God because I think when it comes to this topic, we can, it can become as fleshly as it can become spiritual. I don't know if you've ever had this happen, but people come up and they go, God told me. And I'm like, how do you argue with that one? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share how you vet out whether it's the Spirit of God speaking to you or not. And we see the picture. This picture here gives us evidence of this. The first thing that we do when we're trying to discern the voice of the Spirit of God speaking to us, we ask ourselves this question. Is it in conflict with the Word of God, what God has already spoken in Scripture? Because if it is, it's not the Spirit of God speaking to you. It's another voice. And you better beware. The second thing is, what did they do? This group was pr praying, they were fasting, and together they heard the same prompting. And I would dare say this, that when God prompts us, this doesn't always, sometimes we just need to act on it. But if it's a big decision and we're, we've set aside time to listen and God speaks to us, we're trying to discern, is this from God? Go to some mature believers and take it before them and lay it before them and say, this is what I heard. Would you pray with me over this? And let's make sure this is what God was saying. Because they all agreed. And then they sent them out, Paul and Barnabas, on their journey, supported by those back home, but they went and followed after the Lord. It's interesting that it says that they were sent out by the Holy Spirit. I want you to hear this. This wasn't just a human-led initiative, but a God-ordained calling. Has the Spirit of God prompted you about something? Say it's a picture of your life. We take a snapshot of you or me, and we have a spiritual snapshot. How is God speaking to us? What is he prompting us about? Is it something within the context of our faith journey? Is it something in context with a relationship? Is it something in context with a vocation? Is it something in context with sharing faith with those around us? What is God speaking to you about? Once we hear that, we've created space. The second thing is step into it. Obey. Follow what God is calling you to do. Then the third thing is in eight, verses 8 through 12. So not only do we need to create space to discern the voice of the Holy Spirit, we need to be obedient to the leading of the Spirit. Listen to verses 8 through 12. And it says this, But Elamus, the magician, for that is the meaning of his name, opposed them, seeking to turn the proconsul away from the faith. But Saul, who was also called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, 
Do you hear that? Here's this thread being woven. It's beautiful. But Saul, who was also called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked intently at him and said, you son of the devil. I love that. I I just love Paul. Come on, throw it down, Paul. (laughs) You son of the devil, you enemy of all unrighteousness, full of all deceit and villainy, will you not stop making crooked the straight paths of the Lord? And now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon you, and you will be blind and unable to see the sun for a time. And immediately darkness fell upon him, and he went about seeking people to lead him by the hand. Then the proconsul believed when he saw what occurred, for he was astonished at the teaching of the Lord. The third thing is this. We must depend on the empowerment of the Spirit to accomplish what if we're going to, if we've heard God say something, the Spirit of God is prompting us, it's been affirmed, and we step into that and say, you know what? I'm going to go in this direction because I feel this is what God wants. You step into that in obedience, don't disconnect. That the power in which you fulfill what God has spoken to you about is the, the very essence of staying in tune to the Spirit of God in your going. Stay attuned to what he is speaking as you go. Because here's a fact, and I I want you to hear it. If you're going to chase after the purposes of God, it will be opposed. The evil one will oppose everything that God wants. It's it's, it's real. You're going to feel it. You're going to experience it. And if you think that you're going to just step in and obey, I've heard God, I'm going to follow God, and in your own power, somehow you try to fulfill what God has called you to do, you're going to fail. You're going to fail. It can't happen. We can't fulfill in our power what God has called us to do. It's in his empowerment that we do it. And what you see is this magician come against Paul. God wants to spread the gospel. And so there's opposition. What's the first thing we might say? Well, it might be that God doesn't want me to do it. It's a little dangerous out there. I feel opposition. Well, yeah. Realize that there's a spiritual war that's raging, and if you're going to step into this moment in obedience, that you're going to come against some hard times that way, but you're going to see some beautiful things. Imagine if Paul didn't, you know, you son of the devil. If he didn't take that, and he, he calls this guy out, and he sees this guy become blind, and yet... He sees Sergius Paulus accept Christ and the gospel get proclaimed in that whole region. Man, he's seeing some amazing things. You know why? Created some space to hear, stepped out in obedience, and then continued in following and staying in tune with God as in his going and in his doing, it wasn't in his own strength, but the power of the spirit of God within him. Some majorly good stuff. Remember, the Spirit of God will always empower the people of God to do the things that God has called you to do. I'm going to give you three takeaways. I almost did this. (laughs) It's really bad for the the online people. There are three takeaways. Sometimes you do stupid things and they happen in your head. You never say anything. Nobody notices. There's other times that you bring attention to it. Then you really look like an idiot. This is one of those times. Three three takeaways. Listen, I, I do want you to hear this. We need to create space to discern what the Spirit of God is saying to us. And I'm gonna just flat out say this. What does that look like for you? What does creating space look like for you? I don't think it's the same for all of us, but where would you say, if someone were to ask you, where, how do you listen? How do you stay attuned to the voice of God? I create space. What does that look like for you? 
Is it a half a day you, you put your phone down to social media to the side and say, God, I need to hear from you? Is it fasting, literally from food, that you, for a day or for two days or for a week, you just say, God, I'm so serious about this. It's not about setting something aside. It's about setting something aside for the purpose of listening. You can create space and nothing can happen. But if I'm creating space so that I'm attuned to the voice of God, God will always be faithful to speak to us. The second thing is this. We need to be obedient to what God is speaking to you about. Is there something that God has revealed to you that you, you have been reluctant to obey? Is there something that God has stirred in you and you're like, yeah, but my friends. Yeah, but my husband or my wife. Yeah, but the implications. If the Spirit of God is stirring in you, respond in obedience. Step into that. And follow him. That is sometimes the, hard, the hardest step is sometimes the first step. I, I'll even use this for an example. There are times where God has prompted me, Barry, just go pray. You want to know the enemy, what he does? It's like, people see you go forward, man. You're going to think, man, our leader, something's wrong with him. You know, I'm like, no that's a lie from Satan. And when we get in tune to the Spirit of God, it's everything that's right with us. We've got to put things out the way they are and clarify some of these things. What is it that God wants you to obey? And then the last thing, depend on the Spirit of God in your going and in your doing. We need to be dependent on that. So we don't just go, I took the first step and then I'm on my own. It's like, wow, crash and burn over here. Yeah, because you're not staying in tune to the spirit of God within your life. But when you are, you're gonna be able to experience and see the beauty of what God has called you to do. There is nothing more exciting in life than being in attunement with your creator. The one who gave you life, he gives you purpose, and to follow that, there's nothing greater. So what's God speaking to you about today? Every one of us is probably different, but I guarantee he's speaking to you about something. What is that? And then respond to him. So we're going to close in prayer. Father God, this morning, do your good work. I am so, so grateful that you didn't just save us and then we exist until heaven, but you saved us and you have a purpose for every moment, every minute, every second on this planet. God, that you dwell within us through the power and the presence of your spirit. God, help us unlock the beauty of what that looks like so that we may experience the fullness of what you intended. So God, we give you this time. Stir in our hearts, whether it's a commitment to make space, whether it's a realization to obey, or whether it's a dependence, God, that you will empower us for the things you have called us to. God, help us respond. And we give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen.